the long and whining road. I don't want to go. You can't make me. You want someone to go? Why don't you go? <laughs> That's not me as a young kid, you know, not wanting to go to school back then. That is what most folks have in common with training gyms and taverns, with dive bars and barbells. They might not want to go to one. <laughs> they might not want to go home from the other. But both places, I believe, do a better job than school ever did at teaching us the three key skills that we need to living better lives, getting along, and leveling life's playing field. Finding our common ground. Common ground found along our long and winding roads. The long and winding road. And it's time for another unbuckled, bumpy ride with your guide, the stark raving lunatic himself. I'm Jim. Let's jump right in again. Welcome to my podcast based on my brand new book, available on Amazon, Live Life Lean, L-E-A-N. It's a year-long guide to gratitude and our daily grind. The book that combines some timeless wisdom from a whole lot of the world's wiser people with the reflections, reactions, and wisecracks of the guide's author, me. And it guides you, the reader, through the simplest system for a happy, healthy, authentic, and genuinely grateful everyday experience. I urge you to get the book. Of course I do. I wrote it. It's either at Amazon or at my website, amperage.com, A-M-M-P-U-R-A-G-E. But even without it, let's make next week better than last, our next year better than the past, and get started now with today's episode of... So, dramatically whining about not wanting to go, huh? To school? Nah, that wasn't it. To the gym to work out? Yeah, maybe, sometimes. Or having to leave my favorite watering hole, because it's close to closing time. Yeah, could be. <laughs> See, I'm not currently enrolled in school, but I do still learn a lot from my time spent at two places, dive bars and gyms. And want to know a secret? <laughs> I believe these to be the two great equalizers in society. Yeah, really, dive bars and gyms. They are the places where what we have in common makes all the difference. And I really believe that genuine equality can be found there at what I call the crossroads of high intensity and happy hour. So here's a toast. Lift them up to barbells and bars, to dive bars and gyms. Now, after hearing that, go try whining about why you don't want to go. <laughs> see, some things have so much in common and it's right there, clear as day to see, and yet we keep missing the connection for so long. And when we do finally make the connection, it both feels like, you know, an epiphany, like an aha moment, and also like a, well, yeah, duh moment. And getting to that point, getting there, can sometimes be a long road, a long and whining road. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You ever remember whining about not wanting to go to school in the morning, not wanting to get out of bed and just go? I actually used to fake still being asleep with my 85 pound German Shepherd jumping up in my bed and trying to freaking lick my face off. I thought I could fool my folks back then. No, that wasn't my senior year in high school. I was like nine years old. But I didn't want to go. I'm sure I was like a lot of kids. I'm sure we all had that in common. We didn't want to go to that place that was so, so, so valuable. Go when we should, go where we should. Back then, that so valuable place was school. Nowadays, I feel the most authentic opportunities for learning are found by being sure to not pass on the bar. The dive bar. The dive bars and the barbells. Take training gyms, for example. Listen, you don't always want to make yourself go, but once you get there and start getting into it, you know you don't want to leave. You're definitely not regretting that you started. After 40 years in the fitness field, almost, never have I ever heard someone say, Man, I wish I hadn't done that workout. <laughs> and the other one? 
Think about taverns. You look forward to going to them, and sometimes, well, sometimes we stay too long and don't know when you really should close your tab and go and leave. See, both of these are the subjects of my newest podcast because they both fascinate me. And I find it just genuine, down to your genes. J-E-A-N, genetic genes. I called it dive bars and barbells. Finding equality at the crossroads of high intensity and happy hour. They have so much in common. And we all find out when we're there amongst each other that we all have so much in common too. But that, we're going to save that for the, that particular podcast. That'll unpack itself with every episode. But so many folks don't see the similarities, and I don't mean just the get up and go issues that are similar between the two, but that is a good place to start. So that's where we're going to start today. Because though we may not at first see their commonality, you know, on the surface, you know, right off the bat, they both have those problems. Problems with our get up and go. Recently at a favorite dive bar, my wife and I were approached by a friend, a single woman. We'd known her for years. On occasions, we'd spent evenings together sharing beers, listening to music. And we'd spent afternoons, honestly, together working out at our gym, weights, and even more music. Well, this 40-something woman didn't know it, but she was having an epiphany. I knew it because I saw it. There was a light bulb floating right over her head. And she said, quote, one place, you know, at times you don't want to make yourself go, but you know you should. And one place you don't want to make yourself leave, but you know inside, you know when it's time that you should. Thank you, Annette. The very self-aware statement from a woman who was at least for that moment very much in touch with knowing who she was in her world. That world that day was a dive bar, talking with me and my wife about her workouts under the bar. You know, the bench press bar, the squat bar, the Olympic bar, at the training gym. But even after all these years, sometimes she didn't know how to make herself go to one or go home from the other. Most of us have been so guilty as charged of that too, you know. The problem is that we, we think that it's got to be this commitment rather than just the mastery of getting ourselves started and getting ourselves aimed in the right direction. You know, it's got to be all or nothing, okay? And that's sometimes a perspective that, to be honest with you, it surprises us because it doesn't have to always be all or nothing. Two quotes from two famous minds that if I'd have gone all or nothing all in, I never would have predicted which one said which. There's a fitness fanatic guru that we have all heard of and a very famous fan of the alcoholic beverage that most of us have heard of, Jack LaLanne and W.C. Fields. Now, one man said this, there are three things in life that are extremely hard, steel, a diamond, and to know oneself. Now, the other man muttered this, the only way you can hurt your body is if you don't use it. Well, surprise, surprise, though, it was W.C. Fields who knew deep inside that one of the hardest things in life is to know oneself. Yeah, it was the lane who said the surest way to injury was just inaction. I wonder if either of them ever experienced what the rest of us do sometimes. You know, not wanting to go to the gym, not wanting to go home from the bar. I've spent a lot of time around both, bars and barbells. No, not fields in the lane. And I've witnessed a lot of feeling of both. And I've learned that there are like three examples of how we act when we don't want to go somewhere. And there are also ways how to make ourselves better at enjoying where we really know we have to go. Our problems or our symptoms are these. One, we get low when we don't want to go. We get low and not aim high. When we don't want to go, we just say no, and we don't ask why. And thirdly, when we don't want to go, we move too slow, and we think it's not even worth the try. Our solutions, though, are just, do you remember as a kid, that track race that you ran, where you got on the track and you hunkered down and you're ready on your mark, ready, set, and go? Well, actually, ready, set, go is actually aim, ask, and act, or aim, ask, and act is the same thing as ready, set, go. Here's what I mean. Ready is readying yourself and aiming your body in the right direction. Nobody's ready if they're running one way and the rest of the race is running the other way. Set yourself. Set yourself as your mindset and put your mindset at play. And then go. Go is an act. It's any act at all that's supporting that mindset that is aimed 
in the right direction. What do I mean? All right. Ready, set, go. One, aim ourselves posturally, okay? Seriously, it sounds so, so simple. But if you, if you just stop and realize that when it comes to going someplace, you don't have to commit just yet, but at least aim your physical body in the direction as a start, okay? Here's what you don't do. Don't stay low. I mentioned that earlier. Have you ever tried getting a reluctant and resistant, either a pet or a pipsqueak or even a person, to go someplace physically? There's always one common tactic they use to not go when they don't want to. They get low. It's almost inherently instinctive. Pets will hug the carpet. Children will squat down instantly. A three-year-old somehow weighs 250 pounds and almost impossible to pick up. And it happens with people with adults too. It's what we teach women in our self-defense classes. Get low and become the immovable object with a lower center of gravity. See, if you want others to move, pets, pipsqueaks, other people, don't stay up there and high. You gotta go down and meet them at their level. Canines, kids, and coworkers, you gotta get down where they're at because the more they feel that you're looking down on them from on high, the less they're willing to look up to you. Okay, well, the same thing for yourself. In order to get yourself to go, stop looking down on yourself. Stop looking down on yourself. Stop condemning. And just first, shift your posture in the right direction. Aim yourself that way, whatever way you need to go. If it's out the bar or if it's through the front door to the gym, aim yourself that way until you find yourself heading that way. Aim your pelvis that way, your belly button that way. So you first got to aim your pelvis that way so your ass has a chance to follow it. And remember, it's just an aim. It's not commitment. You haven't pulled the trigger yet. Number two, ask. Ask yourself positively. Have an internal dialogue about what is true and what's just trash. Do I want the outcome that's going to come when I come out of the place that my mental state now has my body stuck? Never see or view internal dialogues as judgment. It was the greatest gift I gave myself, was realizing that my conversations I had with myself were not my burden. They were my blessing. They're not judgment. They're just discussion. Figure out what's true and what just feels like trash. Meaning, what is it now, high time, that we throw out and discard? Not judging it as good or bad, but deciding whether or not it's right or wrong for you. Ask yourself. Ask for reasons. Don't tell yourself rationalizations. Ask. Ask why you should go. Not tell yourself why it's not that important. And the best way to do that is recognizing anytime and every time when you have two specific things coming out of your mouth, write these down, two specific things coming out of your mouth, you know that you've got rationalizations. One is chosen comparison, or two, choice wooden butts. First, chosen comparison. If you hear yourself saying and thinking, well, they do it, well, they get to, or they don't have to, or they're worse than I am, etc., etc., etc. All that does is just justify not taking out the trash and discarding, not going. See, when you do that, you're living your life, we're living our life by their rules, by their judgment. How does that feel? What if they suddenly changed? What if the people that we're comparing ourselves to suddenly changed and became a super disciplined disciple of just do it? Then, then, will you get up and go? Because if so, they're controlling you. And you're letting them. Have you ever heard anyone say these two things? First quote, it's lonely at the top. Hmm, I wonder why is that? Well, maybe it's because of the second quote. The other thing, because misery, misery loves company. Whenever you think and hear chosen comparisons, you know, comparisons with other people that your brain chooses and that these comparisons will slow your go, throw them out and hear what life sounds like and feels like without being controlled by others' actions. It is awesome. And don't forget, wooden butts. <laughs> wooden butts, wood and butt. No matter the brain banter that you buy into, you won't go anywhere with what I call a wooden butt in your mouth. Meaning, well, I would and but, well, I would whatever, but, well, I, I would, but <laughs> change it to, well, I won't because it's not the same thing. Then listen to how that feels. And finally, the third part, act. Like Jacqueline Lane said, the only way you're going to get hurt 
is to not use what you have. Act, just act. Any action that is purposefully in support what you asked and where you aimed. Take action. A body in motion does tend to stay in motion. You've already aimed yourself in that direction. You know that you should go, and you've already asked yourself reasons why you should. Your reasons, not someone else's. And you've cleared all of them big butts out of the way. So put on the shoes, remote start your car, turn off the TV. Hell, if you change your mind and not go to the gym, it literally will take under 10 seconds to undo all three of these. Shoes kicked off, car turned off, TV back on. Or at the bar, make the Uber app come get you. Ask for the bar tab check. Hell, even get up and go take a pee. Change your mind and you can cancel the Uber car. Start a new tab. And you can refill that bladder. Hell, nobody ever buys beer anyways. We just rent it. But first steps sometimes seem the hardest because it feels like it means commitment. Well, maybe, but not necessarily. What it does mean is momentum. Your body's in motion, and it will tend to stay in motion in that direction. Now you're heading in the direction of go. And if you've got a fear of commitment, guess what? Obviously, you're pretty good company there. Look around. Look around you in that bar and see all the others there who were stuck, still there, making poor jokes about how, <laughs> you know, rehab, it's for quitters, okay? Just like, I don't know, just like you were two minutes ago, but now you're not. You're a body in motion. You're not anymore. Nope. Now you're going places. Dive bars and gyms are all about our issues with the go. There's a toilet paper commercial that's out there. It's been out there the last few years with big red and blue cartoon bears. You know the one. And the motto is, enjoy the go. <laughs> well, be like those bears. Enjoy the go. Now. Well, now is me talking about big cartoon potty train bears and their pooping patterns and wiping their big furry brown bahookies. Okay, well, they're not brown. They're red or blue. Anyways, is that uncomfortable to listen to? Well, if so, then quit staying stuck here, exposing yourself to it, and just go. You see, most times we don't want to go because it means we'd have to leave where we're at. And where we're at is comfortable. That's why we're there. But going where we need to and when we need to feels uncomfortable, purely because uncomfortable is uncomfortable, not comfortable, not comforting us and comforting us, comfort is all about feelings and wants, not facts and needs. And we need to realize the fact is sometimes we gotta go. Go when it's uncomfortable, go to where we may actually feel some pain, even go away from where everybody knows you by your name. Cheers to that. I've countless times been told by clients that they didn't want to come to the gym to work out that day, but they were always glad they came. Glad they made themselves get up and go. So now, aim your pelvis, ask yourself why you should, and take that first step. So you can get to know you. It's the hardest thing in life. Simple and plain. And now more words of wisdom to wire your socks off from the Live Life Lean Guide itself. Today's entry from page 343. What the guide said, if merely feeling good could decide, then drunkenness would be the supremely valid human experience. <laughs> and what your guide heard? And the hangover would be the adult equivalent to when we, as children, would go outside, look up at the sky, and spin around and round till we all fall down. So <laughs> what do you think about that? Using the book's Live Life Lean system, what have you learned recently? that's new to you? What have you earned that wasn't just easily handed to you? Where are you adding to the world? And you pray it's not just about you. Now, reflect on all of that. Respect it. Be grateful for it. But before you navigate someplace next, please like, subscribe, and share this to show you care. Thank you for listening. I hope you're enjoying your copy of the Live Life Lean L-E-A-N guide. Enjoying it almost as much as I did creating it. And if you don't have a copy yet, Go on over to Amperage.com or Amazon and get started today experiencing the amazing power of knowing every day is literally yours to be grateful about. And you need never feel unfulfilled again. I'm Jim Hall. And until next time, good health, God bless. And now, 
Go get a little dirty learning something new. Earning what's not given to you. Adding to this crazy world that we share. And navigating your way to something new. And next.